So today I spread out more chert over here. Kind of, it, it used to slope off a lot more before it would go down to that area. So we're leveling it out a little bit more to give the buses a little bit more back up and turn around room up here. Uh, and then we're also working on the road that goes around to the back side, getting in a lot more. It used to pitch really far to the right. It was pretty treacherous. So we're getting it leveled out slowly here. I need to get more chert. Um, today's project took a little more than I thought, but it's getting there. And then we moved a bunch of chert around to the back side here because we're gonna need to start putting scaffolding up and I need it to be pretty level out there. So we did the first, first big load of it here today, getting it leveler, and then uh, we'll get one more load in here and, and get it nice and nice and smooth. But we're gonna rake it out and then keep running the compactor over it. It'll, uh, it'll even out a lot. So that'll be nice. And then we can set the scaffolding up outside to do the sheeting on the, on the top, where it's pretty scary there. So again, we're gonna keep building this road, leveling it out. There's gonna be a retaining wall that goes up over here. As you can see, we're about five feet below the building already. So, but it's, it's already much improved. It's a much better road than it was this morning. Probably another, at least one, if not two more loads of chert to get it probably the way that I want. So it's going good though, you're happy with it. Fixing that belt tensioner, I'm gonna put a little thing, adjust it so it's a little tighter, and then I'm like a, give him a piece of aluminum ring to put it on there so it can keep that belt from popping off of there. <laughs> okay. Have tools, we'll travel. <laughs> Two spare parts.
through the 70s and 80s, this was used as a gospel group tour bus. So, the dinettes, a little refrigerator here. This was the factory bathroom. I got some nice original seats in here. And then the bunk layout. And then not really sure what they had back here. Could have been another big big bed or maybe just a lounge. Just to socialize. Who knows? But very cool. Back in the day when the gospel group was touring in this, I mean, that was, this would have been really cool. Lots of stories like that out there. I like this curved seat they did, that's kind of neat. Just thinking about all the miles they traveled and he's really done his dashboard. He's had time to work on this. Look at all these new gauges. It's beautiful what he's done. He's gonna, he's doing really, really neat work on this thing. It's gonna be really nice when it's done. Unfortunately, he had a mechanical breakdown on its maiden voyage home. It's still on its maiden trip home now. But it's been over a year. Get that engine replaced in it. He's been working on that engine, transmission, everything. But it's a really cool scenic cruiser. I told him this should be his new profile picture, his butt hanging out of a bus while he's working on it. Just want to make sure I didn't leave any tools in, which could be bad. Yeah, like a wrench attached yeah. to the back of the spinny bolts. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing. Oh. I didn't tighten it. Did I tighten it? Yeah, we, we, yeah, we tightened it. Together. Yes. It's not I did that there. one. And then with that, okay, we're good to go. Okay, this works. Yeah. yeah. All right, clear. It's still powered on. How do I Don't shut it off? I'll show you. How, how long do I hold it? You don't hold it long at all. Don't push the button. Good. What you doing? Does he know he's trying to back it in here? Or? You might want to go talk to him.
both got it. Hey, you're the first one to come in on a tow truck. What an honor. What an honor. <laughs> Not done yet. It's going to be something small. We'll see. So how'd you like that scenic part of Rickman County? Where we broke down? Yeah. That was interesting, that place we were. Not a good place with the curves either. Oh no, yeah, it's all downhill, yeah, curvy. It does look like nuts on I figured out who the John might be. It might be the guy I get my shirt from. I don't know what he drives, so every time I see him, he's in a dump truck. Oh, what do you do over there? You walk in the ditch. You don't have an air hookup under your dryer compartment for? I don't. Oh, wow. I should put that in <laughs> I see he didn't have back off plates. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Unless he just needs to pull back forward more, maybe with that. Yeah, he's going to do that. You need some new front radius rod bushings, it looks like. <laughs> I can see it moving. <laughs> Go ahead and pull, pull back forward a little bit, bring it forward just a little bit more. My property line goes to halfway through that gate, so I didn't know. That's good. How much do you think a 10 mile tow is going to be? <laughs> Judging by how the hookup went, as much as they can. <laughs>
Hold your fire. <laughs> hey, you guys are skeet shooting, just hitting my solar panels. Hey. Hey guys. Hey. Ho. Oh. Right where you're skeet shooting, it's hitting my solar We panels. live there. Hollering at you. We're on the other side of that road, and your, your shells are coming down right on top of us. <laughs> you got some high velocity rounds there, brother. Well, they just target low, target low. Yeah, no, I thought it sounded like coming down. It wasn't breaking nothing. But you just break them. Yeah, you yeah. could probably just throw them low. It was just the high shots that was raining on me because okay. every other one. Well, you still don't want to be shooting across the roadway. Right. <laughs> throw them into the mountain. You got to throw them to the base. Yeah. Just flip it around 180 degrees and you'll be in good shape. All right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all right. It's all good, man. Well, I didn't even know there was anything up there. That's the only house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tried hollering, but I figured y'all had your earphones. I told you I had a tow truck. I don't know. Somebody down there it looks like a truck or something. Or there. A tow truck yeah, we got down. And I was like, well, there's hollering somebody down there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, All good, brother. <laughs> you weren't crazy, Robbie. <laughs> I know. It didn't make sense. I was like, <laughs> the only that matched the rain. So this is where Robbie's bus is parked here, and they were hearing the shotgun pelts ripping through these trees here and, and falling on their bus. But that chert wall is just on the other side of this. So our our driveway here, and then there's road at the bottom of the hill, and then that's directly across the street. So. It's maybe 150 yards from where he was, but we're a direct line of sight uh, coming uh, from there to here. So um, definitely don't want people shooting this way from over there. Uh, everybody shoots there. The local police and everybody even go there and shoot because they have a great backstop there. Um, but you just got to be facing the backstop, not shooting up to our hill. So I talked to the property owner over there. That wasn't the property owner, but I told him, you know, if there's people over there shooting skeet, they can't do it this way. Uh, he, he completely understood and uh, was going to talk to everybody, make sure they knew that people live across the street here. But it's still crazy to shoot this direction. Um, I, I don't understand it. There's a roadway in between us and uh, you're just not supposed to be shooting like that. Uh, especially at, you know, where somebody's at and their kids are up here. And he kept hearing the shotgun pelts ripping through the trees and then falling, hitting the bus, hitting his solar panels. Um, I, I thought there was no way that somebody's shooting towards us. And then when we, he re, Robbie mentioned that they were probably shooting skeet, then it made complete sense why somebody would be shooting up in the air in, in this direction. So, crazy day. No truckers leaving, and the next one has arrived. Go ahead and back up. So this thing broke down about 10 miles from here. I got a text message. Uh, first thing that happened is the fuel filters plugged and it, it, the engine died from fuel, fuel starvation. They replaced the filter, it was nasty. Uh, got a new one on, finally got it primed, got it running, uh, went to put it in drive and it wouldn't go, uh, wouldn't move at all. The, uh, there was a puddle of transmission fluid under it and there was white smoke coming out from the air intake. And it was at a horrible spot to even try to work on a bus. So I just, you know, they, they got a tow truck. The state police were there. They made them, you know, get a tow truck and get it out of there. Had them tow it here. Well, the power, the puddle of, power, of uh, transmission fluid turned out to be power steering fluid. We had just filled that before we left and it got hot and it was, it was a little bit overfilled and it got hot and it came out a little bit. The white smoke was from the power steering fluid burning off of there and it was coming out of the air intake because they removed the whole air filter system from it. Uh, so any smoke in the engine compartment comes up and out the vent for the air intake. 
So luckily that was nothing. The transmission not going into gear, this has an air shifter on it. I reached in there and I jiggled it around and uh, immediately clicked into gear when I did it and then back and forth and we tested it and we couldn't get it to fail, but I didn't want them to drive on the road right away. So we're doing some testing here on the property before we take it out on the road and make sure that everything's okay. So what seemed like were major, major problems turned out to be something very, very minor. It's 440. 440. Yeah, and like, uh, I think it's like 1,400 torque or 12 yeah. or 1,400. Man, this thing's got a good power to weight ratio. Then. It certainly does. Wow. All right, let's fire it up. Fire it up. Well, he kept up with me. Huh? He kept up with your truck? Uh, no, no. I don't know. I'm like, I do I don't think that's safe. I'm like, it's like made out of wood. I'm like, that's definitely not safe. Think like
normal how it had been. Should I just leave it in dry before I... Yeah, I, 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 okay. yeah let's... Well, you know what? I had downshift, I just kept it in on. Yeah, let's put it in, let's go ahead and, let's try put your... Put it in second or... Yeah. I mean, you have plenty of power to do anything you want. Yeah. When you get to the top of the hill, make sure you stay to the out, the far outside left. Don't right. cut the right side. You want to stop at the stoplight? You could do the time. I'm just messing with you. Oh. <laughs> Are you really timing people? <laughs> of course. Yeah. Jeez, oh, please, this thing's got power. <laughs> you know, if we're coming in on the tow truck, it's doing pretty good. Yeah, uh, stay, stay to hug the left side here as you go around. There you go. That was quite impressive, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and we're going left here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you'll never. Just watch out for some of these trees. Go slow so you can keep an eye out. I got a couple more I got to remove. They just, they're a little close for my liking for people. And then probably just like stop a little bit before you get to the drive. All right. Because we gotta move Tyler's truck and stuff too. We gotta move Kelly's car. We gotta do quite a few things in order to get you a turnaround. Because you won't be able to pull in the shop this time. Okay, give me just a second here. Okay. Oh, you could go five more feet forward, easily. Maybe eight. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got easily four feet, three feet. Keep coming, two feet, plenty of room. Okay, only because the bus owner's behind me. <laughs> I think we'll get it in two moves. You can smell my nervousness. Yeah. <laughs> That's good there. Stop. coming. It's pretty good there. Go ahead and turn your wheel. You got it, I think. Stop. Stop. I think you would make it. I think I'm going to get tight over there. Then. That's fine. times as you've gone in and out of gear, backing up forward, backing up forward, 
it's not failing again. Let's watch out for these trees. I definitely need to cut that tree down. <laughs> Sunlight probably doesn't help right now either. What the heck is that with the suspension? That's a good noise. <laughs> pressure. <laughs> yeah, we're at 120. <laughs> Now's a good time to have air. Because <laughs> otherwise you'd reach 120 miles per hour by the time you got to the bottom of the hill. I did it in the golf cart one day. I let off the brake right about here in the golf cart. Yes. That little curve in the road by the stop sign there, it went on two wheels. <laughs> I, I about flipped it. shift and everything, you know. It's so smooth. I'm, I'm so happy with the way they set this Allison up. What are we doing here? Pulling straight in over here? Or? Yeah, I, I would, uh, if you pull out here kind of to the road and then back into there, if that makes sense to you. Just be careful where that rock sticks out there. Obviously, we're going to call that paint scrape rock. Is that, Is that right? <laughs> we'll just leave it in drive this time and see what it does. Drive. left around that top corner. Yeah, it was smart enough to do everything it needed to do there. This thing hauls ass. <laughs> Robbie, your bus won't go up the hill that fast. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that is a nice view up there, right? Dude, this thing is awesome. <laughs> So we'll do the same turnaround maneuver and then uh, if it was my bus, I'd hit the road. <laughs> that's what we'll do. But this time you might want to go ahead and take 50, even though it's going to be about 15 miles out of your way. 50 is a double lane road. If you have a breakdown, you're not blocking traffic. Okay. And I don't say that, that I don't have confidence that you watch those trees on the right. Are you good? couple more trees around here to take out make things a little easier for people to turn around. These 40 footers are difficult. Start cutting in now? Yeah.
Okay, let's pick up. <laughs> Good. Happy to report that they made it the almost 900 miles back home to the Allentown, Pennsylvania area without any issues whatsoever. Flawless trip home. Uh, that is so great. I know he was a little bit dejected there and he really thought things were going to be really, really bad. And it turned out just to be so minor, so happy uh, that we were able to get him going again and get him on the road and get him back home. Or back home get him home for the first time in that bus they've been trying forever a uh, year almost a year and a half journey to get that bus home uh, i'm so happy that we'll be a part of that story and that it's home 